Excellent. All right, Kira Koto. My name is Lisa de Klerk. I am the manager at Volunteering Otago. We are hosting the May Leaders of Volunteers, where we will be talking about National Volunteer Week. Um, we have invited a guest speaker for this uh, particular webinar. It is our very first webinar, and um, we're very much appreciative of <laughs> any patience that needs to be done while we work our way through this. We have been practicing for a few fairly while. Um, but the first thing the first um, is um, basically just a short wee introduction to Volunteering Otago and, and why we're doing this. So Volunteering Otago um, has a, an office in Dunedin. Uh, we work with volunteer centres across the country. We have a sister organisation, uh, Volunteering Central in Queenstown and Wanaka. We are hosting Leaders of Volunteers for um, in a webinar series um, format at the moment simply because of circumstances, but we are likely to continue doing it in this way in the future. So any managers, leaders, uh, coordinators, any, any people who manage and support volunteers, this is a, um, a specific training uh, platform for you to get involved in. Um, more than happy for, for people outside of the Otago region to, to join in with this, uh, more than merrier basically. But the reason why we do this is because there is uh, a, a real need for networking opportunities and collaboration across the community. And the more that we have these conversations, the better that collaboration uh, and those conversations can happen in the future. Particularly that collaboration is really important at the moment. Um, I am will be hosting the, this this webinar. Um, I will be um, moderating all the the comments and the questions. So if you do have any questions um, about uh, what's what's going on with the presentation, do put them into the chat. Um, Sarah, who is our guest speaker, will be um, will tell you how she will be answering those questions. Um, Probably a good idea is to introduce yourself in the chat as well, of where you're from and what you do as a, um, as a volunteer leader. That'll be really great so we get to know um, who you are as well um, in the community. So that's uh, what we're going to be doing. It's likely that this webinar will take around about half an hour to 40 minutes, depends on how many questions you do have. Um, so we won't be taking the full hour uh, today, but we will be um, around for that full hour if it is um, seen as a need today. So I will just be quiet and I will pass you over to um, our guest speaker, Sarah McDonald. Kia ora koutou everyone. I'm delighted to be talking to you about National Volunteer Week today, um, especially connecting with a committed group of leaders of volunteers. Um, you all play such a vital role in volunteering in New Zealand and I feel really lucky um, to connect with you today and share about National Volunteer Week. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge the important mahi that Volunteering Otago and Volunteering Central are doing, and um, especially through this challenging and evolving time we're all going through. Um, it's been fantastic to see their resources, stories, and for them creating opportunities like today for us all to connect and share together. So today's presentation will be a bit of a journey about National Volunteer Week. Um, I'll be sharing some updates from Volunteering New Zealand. I'll be talking a bit about my role at VNZ. Um, also why National Volunteer Week is important to celebrate. I've included some FAQs throughout my presentation, so it might answer some of your questions throughout, hopefully. Um, and I will be sharing, the main focus is talking about ideas for how you can take part in National Volunteer Week. Um, at the end of my talk, I thought it'd be really great to hear your ideas and any feedback you have. Uh, 
Cool, so to begin with, I'll share a bit about Voluntary New Zealand. So we are the kaitiaki of Mahi Aroha, empowering volunteers to enrich Aotearoa New Zealand. Voluntary New Zealand is the peak body of volunteering in New Zealand. Um, we play a national advisory and sector leadership role. We enable and support community organisations to work through a volunteer workforce. We advocate for ethical volunteering and champion the value of volunteering. So to share a few updates about VNZ in terms of our COVID-19 response, um, I was just thinking of a few things I could share with you today. So we've been part of the national response to COVID-19 and are working collaboratively with the Volunteer Centre Network throughout New Zealand. Um, as the Volunteer Centre Network mobilise and support their local civil defence and other organisations that are supporting people at the moment. Um, the Volunteer Centres have been very central in getting the National Volunteer Pandemic Guidelines out and promoting those, which has been awesome. At VNZ, we have also been in touch with our 19 member organisations. We've been providing um, specifically pandemic resources and virtual volunteering resources. We have been conducting research. So we've done two surveys. The first one was about the immediate response. The second survey, which we're currently running, is about looking at level three onwards um, and what that would look like. And we're compiling all the data and putting them on our website as a update report. So I would encourage you all to have a look at, at some point if you can. So I'm the Marketing Membership Manager at Voluntary New Zealand, and I've been with VNZ just over two years. This will be my third National Volunteer Week. Um, so I started out at Voluntary New Zealand as a volunteer, and this really gave me the first taste of volunteer management and a deeper understanding about how important it really is. When I reflect back when I was a volunteer, there were three things that stood out to me and I thought I'd share them with you today. Um, so when I first started volunteering at VNZ, I was really surprised and I really liked how I was treated like part of the team. So I wasn't just a volunteer, I was very much part of the team. There was no difference between paid staff and volunteers. Um, one way this was achieved was I was included in broader team meetings. So even though I was working in particular areas, I was still included in um, the wider conversations that were going on. I was also encouraged to share my work with the team and I thought that was really nice. So it wasn't like I would just email them what I was working on. I was actually able to express what I was working on and the Volunteering New Zealand team were very open to my ideas as well. So I think those experiences have really um, continued to this day and I reflect on, um, yeah, how important volunteer managers are in in the enjoyment as well as of a volunteer, but how, um, yeah, volunteering doesn't help without good leaders. So um, here's one of the FAQs that some of you may have been thinking about over the past month. Will National Volunteer Week be going ahead? Yes, <laughs> with lots of fireworks. So I feel now more than ever is a time to celebrate National Volunteer Week. Um, volunteering hasn't stopped before, because of COVID-19. Obviously, National Volunteer Week might look a little different to how we were all expecting, but it's still very much going ahead. Um, we've all been through quite a challenging time, and I think National Volunteer Week is an opportunity for all of us to come together for a very positive shared experience. It's also a time to reflect and celebrate all volunteers. So really, it's not about volunteers like right now. You can reflect back over the past year or years. One other important point is um, over the past few, must have been six weeks, we've all seen a rise in community connection. And I think that's quite valid right now to reflect on. Um, I know I've heard so many stories and I've seen it myself where, you, you know, more people are going for walks and kind of waving out and talking to their neighbours and things. And that's really lovely. And I think um, we should kind of um, foster that as we celebrate National Volunteer Week. Um, we are all part of the team of 5 million. 
as Jacinda says, and um, it really shows that we all have the power to contribute to communities. And in a lot of cases, staying at home is included in that. So that's really important to acknowledge. So why is National Volunteer Week important? There are many reasons why National Volunteer Week is important, but I've tried to select three. Um, so from a leaders of leader or manager of volunteers perspective, I think the most important thing is giving thanks to your volunteers. So um, regardless of what you do, that could be like your number one priority with National Volunteer Week. Is, this is an opportunity to thank your volunteers. National Volunteer Week is also an opportunity for all of us to raise the awareness about the value and contribution of volunteers and also the importance of the infrastructure that makes, makes volunteering happen. So like I was saying, um, leaders of volunteers play a crucial role in this, likewise with the volunteer centres, because um, volunteering doesn't happen on, on, on its own. NVW is also a time to inspire people to consider volunteering. So there's many ways we can do that. One way is sharing stories about your volunteers, um, ideally from your volunteers perspective, because then if you can get lots of stories out, then more people can connect with um, different stories that relate to them and that could inspire them to volunteer in the future. Um, so that brings up my other point is to reflect on the value and contribution of volunteers in New Zealand. So I've included some stats here. Um, there are 159 million volunteering hours per annum, and the value of this volunteer labour is estimated at $4 billion, which is huge. And I'm told that that is equal to the construction industry, um, which is pretty amazing. Um, also quite important to note, 89% of MPIs did not employ staff. So yeah, they're quite powerful figures when you see them written down like that. Also when we reflect on some of these stats, obviously they're, they're quite heavy in terms of like the economic value, but it's also important to think about um, the collective well-being of volunteering for all of us and include that in the conversation as well. Um, so yeah, now the main part of my talk, ideas for National Volunteer Week. So I've created 15 ideas, um, tried to make them quite relevant to this current time in terms of being a bit more virtual. And I've looked at ideas from International National Volunteer Week ideas. I've looked at ideas that VNZ have done in the past and that other organizations have done for National Volunteer Weeks and also some fresh ideas for this year. Um, just to note, number 15 is the best one, so try and hang on and listen till the end. So number one, um, check out the National Volunteer Week website. So that should be your first point of call. Um, basically on the website, we have a range of resources, including um, a National Volunteer Week certificate, campaign copy, um, the Heart, the National Volunteer Week Heart, which you can print and download, and we'll be uploading more resources there over the next month. Number two um, is the National Volunteer Week theme. Tahuya o Tamahitahi, the benefit of working together. So this theme should really underpin every all your National Volunteer Week activities. And the benefit of working together is very relevant for now. Um, as we've seen, there's been so much collaboration, which is really positive, and we hope that continues. So this theme should hopefully enable that to happen. Um, I'll just quickly check the chat. Oh, awesome. <laughs> so that's good. That's working. Um, number three, virtual morning teas. So I know some of you may already be doing this. We're actually going to do that with our team this Friday. So basically with a virtual morning tea, you could share um, a recipe that your whole team could um, make. So while you might be physically apart, you're still kind of um, together and having a shared morning tea in that sense. Number four, collaborate. Um, I think National Volunteer Week is um, a fantastic opportunity for us 
not just to think about our own organization, but to think of others and perhaps even inviting other organizations to be part of virtual morning teas and um, other events where you can connect and your volunteers can connect with other volunteers. Number five, be the chalk of the town. So hopefully in your neighborhoods like mine, um, you've seen like lots of lovely artwork and inspirational messages on the pavements. And I think this would be a fantastic time for us to really highlight messages about volunteering, um, you know, the NVW hashtag, um, the NVW heart, and really um, use the pavements around to really celebrate and share those messages. Um, number six, NVW hearts over your windows. So again, when I think about my area, everyone's been putting like teddy bears in the windows, which is really cool. And I thought it would be fantastic if we all um, put the NVW hearts in the windows or messages in the windows for volunteers. So that, um, yeah, a different way of getting our message out there. Number seven, certificate of recognition. So like I say on the National Volunteer Week website, there is a certificate you can download and um, type in your volunteer's name and you could um, email that to them or send through the post. Number eight, contact your local volunteer centre, which you guys have all done today. <laughs> so volunteer centres really are the heart of our communities and um, they will be the best place to go to you know, perhaps know what's going on, what activities are going on, and they may be able to help you with um, your campaign. Number nine, create thank you videos for your volunteers. So one um, video I saw a couple of weeks ago, which I loved, was from the Ministry of Health, and it's called Passing the Aroha. You may have seen it. Um, and basically this video is for um, health and disability sector workers. And so anyone can create these videos. Basically you write messages on bits of paper and hold it to the camera and kind of pass it through the frame and then someone else takes it. So I thought that was a really creative and lovely way of um, showing thanks and a very inclusive way of getting a whole group of people to do that as well. Um, again, I'll just quickly check the chat. Okay, <laughs> you guys can still hear me. Um, number 10, poems for volunteers. I know for me, when I go to write in a card, sometimes I've got in my head what I want to say, but it's really hard to actually articulate it. And I think a poem is a really lovely way to express how you feel um, without trying to like start from scratch. And obviously there are loads of poems out there. And in terms of how you could present that poem, um, you may have heard of Canva, which is a graphic design tool, which I actually used for this presentation. And it's really um, easy to use and you can just pop the text in and create like a lovely graphic with the poem. Number 11, good news stories. So, like I was saying, it's really important we try and promote some of the amazing volunteer work that is happening. And it's always best where possible to share it from your volunteers' perspective. Because it's very easy to talk about volunteers, but when you can include them in the conversation and let them speak and celebrate themselves, um, that can be quite powerful. Um, also, it's important to share a diverse range of volunteer stories. Um, so then people can connect, you know, not everyone's going to connect with one story. And if we're trying to also inspire people to consider volunteering, it's quite important to share a diverse range. Um, thank you cards for volunteers. So I remember about four or five years ago, I was volunteering and I hadn't volunteered in a while, but I received a thank you card in the mail for National Volunteer Week. And I can still remember that. And I think that's just such a simple but lovely gesture. And um, yes, yeah, so it doesn't all have to be online, basically. I know some of you have very large volunteer um, workforces, so it may not be practical for you to hand make cards. 
But um, there are a lot of creative people in New Zealand and a lot who love um, volunteering and actually making cards. So one idea is if you could connect with your local volunteer centre or um, your networks to try and see if you could get a team of volunteers potentially to help you produce some cards. Um, me personally, last year I was volunteering and making cards that were delivered to rest homes and hospitals. And for me, um, I absolutely love that because I love doing creative things. And so it was quite therapeutic, but it was also, um, you just feel really good helping out. So yeah, that's one idea. Cool. <laughs> Loving the, these ideas, someone said. That's good. Uh, number 13, use National Volunteer Week to encourage regular interactions between your whole team. It sounds obvious, but I know a lot of us work in small teams and also not all of us are working part, uh, full time. So sometimes volunteers or even paid staff can be quite separate from each other. Um, not for any reason, but that's just the way it is. So I think it's fantastic if we could create opportunities where your whole team can come together. Um, so ideas could be um, quizzes, like online quizzes, or um, I know with my family, we have been doing online quizzes together using Trivia Master, which is quite cool, so very easy to use. Um, so that's from a social perspective, but in terms of um, professional development, your teams together could attend, say, a conference or a workshop. And I know there's a lot going on at the moment. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities where your whole team can um, attend something together. Number 14, um, research international volunteer weeks. Lucky for us, next week is actually National Volunteer Week in Australia. So I'll be definitely paying close attention to see what they do. Um, one idea they have promoted last week, which I really love, is wave your appreciation for volunteers. So you can see in these photos, they've drawn um, smiley faces on their hands. And I could see that as quite a cool thing you could do with your own team or paid staff to the, to volunteers. Um, so yeah, it's quite a cool activity. And also for Australia, obviously the start of the year with the bushfires and the incredible um, volunteer effort of the firefighters. Um, I think, yeah, there's, there's a lot of reasons to, even for New Zealand to acknowledge their volunteers. Um, again, I'll just quickly check the chat, all good. Uh, I've written down some other ideas that Australia have put out for National Volunteer Week. So they have said you can hold competitions such as origami, Lego drawing, um, online games, activities such as virtual museum tours, which sounds really cool. I've never done that before. So um, yeah, if anyone has, I'd love to hear about how you can do that. Um, platforms Volunteering Australia recommend is Zoom, Google Hangouts, Facebook, WhatsApp and Slack. Cool, so number 15, which is the lucky last, ask your volunteers. Um, I really think that it's very important to include volunteers in the conversation about National Volunteer Week, unless you really want a complete surprise. But I think um, give volunteers some options of how they would like to be recognised and celebrated and what activities they'd like to do, because it could be very easy for you to spend a lot of time and energy into something that you think they would really love. But um, if you don't actually know, you, yeah, you just don't know. Um, so a couple of ideas I have is you could create a free survey such as Typeform or SurveyMonkey and send it to your volunteers just with some direct feedback. Um, this is, I think, my last slide. So when we think of National Volunteer Week, I don't think we should think of it as it ending at the end of June. I think we need to think longer term and really reflecting on Te Hua o Te Mahitahi. So 
three actions I was thinking from this in the future is that collaboration. So like I say, it's fantastic today and all these opportunities where we're all connecting a bit more. So what are the opportunities to sustain this while we move forward through recovery? Um, also important moving forward to think about language and how we can con continue to create inclusive language. Um, I know for myself, there is a lot of talk about vulnerable people or different age groups. Um, and I think we have to be careful how we label people and how we talk about people. Um, so yeah, that's something just to think about. Also support, I've loved like how supportive the community sector have, has been. I mean, it always is, but more so now. And I think we should think together about what resources do we need and how we can better share knowledge together. So, um, yeah, that was my final thought there. Um, so that's the end of my presentation, but I want it to be the start of our discussion. So I would really love um, for you guys to now um, type in any ideas for National Volunteer Week that you have or let us know what you're doing and it would be cool to kind of have a bit of a discussion about it or any um, other thoughts you have about National Volunteer Week. No one's typed anything yet, but Lisa made a good point. Um, remember, there is International Day of Volunteer on the 5th of December. <laughs> I was going to let Michelle in, um, but now she's just popped up. So there you go. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Michelle uh, Kidney is the Chief Executive of Volunteering New Zealand, and she um, has kindly just, uh, said that she will be here to answer any of your questions as well, specifically around Volunteering New Zealand as well. So. Hi, Michelle. <laughs> Hi, you did an awesome job, Sarah. Oh, there's some backfeed online, but um, yeah, awesome job so far. So, and I love the how you ended that with a let's start a conversation. Yeah, awesome. Lisa, will you read out the questions? I think you might have frozen. From what I can tell, there aren't any questions yet, but I can see some people talking. Yeah, I will read out the questions for you. Right there. It might be um, good to talk about International Wall Managers Day as well. So in, um, International Volunteer Managers Day happens on the 5th of November um, each year. And, um, and they've already actually set a theme for that, actually, which is called What Next? Um, so there's uh, a lot of conversations at the moment around the, I guess, unique opportunities coming out of COVID, collaboration and challenges. Um, but I think not only in New Zealand, but internationally, there's a real, um, a real awareness of, the infrastructure requirements to support volunteering being very much in the spotlight. If we see lots of changes in volunteer workforce numbers, um, which is something people are potentially predicting, then all of those changes require additional volunteer management support. Um, yeah, so International Volunteer Managers Day is, uh, is a global celebration and it's a real focus on the yeah the role of the manager or leader of volunteers because they're often quite an invisible part of our infrastructure. A good overview. And on the fifth of December is International Volunteers Day. I don't think there's much in the way of questions there. Um, 
So it sounds like you've just blown everybody away by your <laughs> amazingness there, Sarah. So thank you very much for that. Um, what I might do is just pop back in so that I can share what volunteering Otago will be doing. Um, as soon as I remember where I've written it all down. I have lots of notes. Um, but basically, um, we had a massive, massive, a lot of events planned for National Volunteer Week, which of course now um, we've had to revise that quite drastically. Um, but we are looking at still going full tail ahead with National Volunteer Week. Um, we will be having volunteer appreciation um, in, a, in a variety of different ways. We're just uh, currently uh, working out what how best to do that. We're definitely having a virtual morning tea, which um, we've voluntold Kirsty um, <laughs> to uh, that she is now taking uh, responsibility for that. Voluntold, if you're not familiar with that, is when you're volunteered for something and you don't really get to say in in, the, in 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 that at all um but so there will be a virtual morning tea that um we tend to have a concert uh and uh lots of fun activities for uh volunteers for that with volunteer targo we'll be having quite a big social media and um radio campaign for during national volunteer week so if you have volunteers who want to share their stories or want to be interviewed on um, otago access radio please do send them through to us we're more than keen to to support any organization and any volunteer um, as much as possible um, and for managers of volunteers we're also going to be holding a um a, a, a webinar series on volunteer tech um, and so we've got <coughs> six organisations who are going to be um, presenting their particular tech, um, whether it's software or whether it's um, a, a website that is dedicated to supporting not-for-profits. So, um, so you can learn different ways to be able to support your volunteers in the changing digital landscape. Um, so that's what we're doing in Volunteer Otago. There'll be more released on that in the next couple of weeks. Um, and as well as Australia being um, part of National Volunteer Week last week, I think um, the USA, Canada and the UK had these last month, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's definitely a lot of information out there and how you can support. I know the UK has some really fantastic ideas um, about how to support volunteers at the moment. Um, so, yeah, that's everything there. All right, is there just the last call for any questions? <laughs> and everybody stops typing. <laughs> All right, well, thank you very much, Sarah. Thank you very much, Michelle, for coming in as well. We really appreciate your support and uh, your expertise in National Volunteer Week. Um, we're very, very keen to be a, a part of um, National Volunteer Week nationally. Uh, so, yeah, thank you again very much, and especially to you, Sarah, for taking the time to, to help um, little old Otago in supporting mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, volunteers across the country. Can I just say that Volunteering Otago has been doing an awesome job, awesome, awesome job. So it's such a pleasure to be in a network with you. Thank you, Michelle. I really appreciate that. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, Lisa. Sorry, the sound's gone a bit loud. But yeah, I really um, appreciate this opportunity and connecting with all the leaders and managers of volunteers here. And also, let's continue this conversation together. And I've emailed Lisa a list of the links that I was talking about so she can send on to you. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for your feedback. Too. Thanks, Sam. So, I, like I said, uh, Sarah says um, there will be an email following this. I have recorded this, so this will be going out um, to you in an email as well, so you don't have to worry about 
um, having to remember everything. And we'll also be putting it up on our Facebook and our YouTube channel as well. So if you do have people that you think might benefit from, from watching uh, the uh, information given by Sarah, please do share that with, with everybody else. In the meantime, thank you very much for all coming. I do appreciate taking time out of your busy days um, to come and learn with us. And now uh, Thank you. Thank you. Brilliant. All right. Interesting to see that there was people from Auckland and New Plymouth.